You can definitely call 2020 the year that keeps on giving, and that's true whether it's giving you something you want or something you'd rather it keep the hell to itself. With that in mind, here are the biggest gaming bombshells of 2020. On June 26, 2020, Twitch banned Dr. Disrespect, and nobody could point to a specific reason why. Streamer Bans, a Twitter bot that automatically detects when a Twitch partner gets banned, broke the news to thousands of followers. Dr. Disrespect said that Twitch did not give him a reason for the decision. In an interview with the Washington Post, the doc said he found out about the ban when he didn't have certain features available to him on Twitch. He once received a suspension for streaming inside of the E3 bathrooms, but this time it seemed to be permanent. The streamer's history of controversy made it difficult to narrow down what exactly caused Twitch to swing the ban hammer. After a month and a half long break from streaming, Dr. Disrespect returned, this time on YouTube. He told viewers that he didn't do anything to warrant a ban and that Twitch didn't even try to reach out to him before laying down the law. It was taken away from us. I, you know, and I don't, and to not know why, I, I am just, man. During this first stream back, the doc hinted at taking legal action against Twitch for the ban. As of late 2020, however, he hasn't made any such action public. Microsoft announced on June 22, 2020 that the company was shutting down its game streaming platform, Mixer. In the same announcement, Microsoft unveiled a partnership with Facebook Gaming, where Mixer partners would receive automatic partner status on Facebook's platform. Despite Microsoft's attempts to build a competitive viewer base, Mixer just could not keep up with Twitch. A deep dive into the data shows that platform-exclusive streamers like Ninja and Shroud didn't reach nearly the number of followers that they had on Twitch. Mixer seemed to have a smaller viewer base overall, and instead of trying to grow the community that Mixer already had, Microsoft spent millions of dollars to bring large names to the platform. According to eSports insider Rod Breslau, Mixer's investment in Ninja and Shroud didn't carry over to Facebook Gaming. The two refused to move over to the platform and forced Mixer to buy them out, with Ninja earning about $30 million and Shroud getting around $10 million. Both streamers eventually returned to Twitch. Shroud signed an exclusive deal with the platform in August 2020, and Ninja followed suit in September 2020. The medical, social, and economic effects of the coronavirus reached the game industry in the first quarter of 2020. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, major industry events like E3, Tokyo Game Show, and Gamescom were either cancelled or were held entirely online. Because the coronavirus also forced many studios to work remotely, many developers had to push back releases and updates. After receiving an initial delay to spring 2020, The Last of Us Part 2 was delayed indefinitely in April 2020 until its final Final release in June 2020. Final Fantasy XIV's patch 5.3, which wrapped up the loose ends of the Shadowbringers expansion's plot, had to be released in August 2020 instead of June. While gamers had to wait a little longer for their favorite games and events, COVID-19 had a positive economic impact on the industry. The coronavirus lockdown gave people more time to enjoy gaming, boosting video game spending to a record high in the first half of 2020. The year's first quarter had 11% higher spending rates than 2019's first quarter, and the second quarter of 2020 had 28% higher spending. Released at the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic, Animal Crossing New Horizons was just what gamers needed for comfort during tough times. It posted record sales numbers for Nintendo, the Nintendo Switch, and the Animal Crossing series during the COVID-19 lockdown. <laughs> According to an August 2020 sales report from Nintendo, Animal Crossing New Horizons reached more than 22 million units sold at the end of June 2020. For reference, Animal Crossing New Leaf, the former top-selling Animal Crossing game, sold 12 million units within the seven years between its release and a New Horizons debut. Nintendo credited the vast sales numbers to all of the Animal Crossing newcomers who bought the game. The company found that more than half of gamers who purchased a Nintendo Switch for the first time between April 2020 and June 2020 2020 used the system to play Animal Crossing New Horizons. Animal Crossing New Horizons quickly became the second highest selling Switch game by the end of June 2020, three months after its release. With 22.40 million copies sold, it only trailed behind Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's 26.74 million sales. 
In June and July 2020, the Me Too movement, which shines light on sexual harassment allegations, impacted game development, gaming events, and content creation. A number of accusers came forward on Twitter, and a number of actions were taken as a result of their claims. One of those exposed was developer Chris Avalone. In light of the accusations against him, Avalone was dismissed from Techland Games, where he'd worked on Dying Light 2 as a consultant. Evolution Championship Series CEO Joey Queller was also accused of sexual harassment. Originally, Evo placed Queller on administrative leave and planned a third-party investigation into the accusations against him. However, within a day of Evo's original decision, the fighting game community's response led to the organization firing him and cancelling Evo 2020 instead. Twitch CEO Emmett Shear responded to numerous accusations against Twitch streamers with an internal email that he shared on Twitter. He wrote to his team, we support people coming forward, commend their bravery in doing so, and know there are many others who have not. He assured Twitch staff and streamers that he took all allegations seriously and would cooperate in any way necessary to address them. In light of the George Floyd protests and the resurgence of the Black Lives Matter movement, video game companies offered their support through public statements and monetary donations. Well-known developers and publishers made significant donations to racial justice organizations battling against racism. Square Enix donated $250,000 to the Black Lives Matter organization and other charities, quote, in the effort to help combat racial injustice. Riot Games committed a staggering $1 million to organizations such as the Innocence Project Project, the American Civil Liberties Union, and similar organizations. On top of that, Riot also promised to match employee donations and create initiatives for aspiring black game developers. Through the 1,741 item H.io bundle for racial justice and equality, independent developers also raised over $8 million for the cause. Priced at $5, the bundle included indie darlings such as Celeste, Night in the Woods, Wide Ocean Big Jacket, and 2064 Read Only Memories. In addition to digital games, it also featured game development assets, tabletop game PDFs, comics, and books. With the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X slated to release during the holiday season, Sony and Microsoft paved the way for their next-gen console releases with spec reveals for the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X in March 2020. The hardware specs of each console put them on fairly even ground. Both companies highlighted advanced graphical features like ray tracing, a lighting technology that imitates real-life light movement. The PS5 and Xbox Series X have similar performance claims, with the Xbox Series X's more powerful GPU giving it a slight advantage. The PS5, meanwhile, offers unique technology like PSVR and an enhanced controller haptics engine, as well as notable exclusives such as the Demon's Souls remake and Spider-Man Miles Morales. Whenever you say Spider-Man, you always mean the other one. You're Spider-Man. Sony also showed off the PlayStation 5's appearance in a June 2020 showcase. In contrast to the Xbox Series X's minimalist design, which was revealed at the end of 2019, the PS5 would have accents and curves. After Epic Games implemented Direct Pay features for its Fortnite mobile apps, both Apple and Google removed Fortnite from their respective mobile app stores. In a statement to The Verge, Apple explained that it refused to give Epic special treatment after the studio implemented payment features without Apple's approval. Google gave The Verge similar remarks, stating that Epic violated the Google Play Store's rules, but that Google welcomed further discussions to get Fortnite back on its shop. Epic sued both companies in response. Its legal actions against Apple included a temporary restraining order to roll back Apple's decision. The preliminary statement in Epic's complaint against Google argued that it was, quote, using its size to do evil upon competitors, innovators, customers, and users, signifying the start of a serious legal battle. On August 24, 2020, Epic won its restraining order against Apple, with a few catches. In addition to removing Fortnite from the App Store, Apple was threatening to revoke developer licenses tied to both Fortnite and the Epic's Unreal Engine. The court restrained Apple from taking away the developer license used for Unreal. However, it allowed Apple to keep Fortnite off of the App Store for the time being. In July and August 2020, Fall Guys had gamers rethinking the concept of a battle royale. It also had, well, this going on. What? What? No way! No! No! There's a hundred people! What is that? 
Fall Guy is a battle royale game focused on minigames instead of guns, but came an unexpected hit before it even released. It took Twitch by storm when streamers across the platform played the beta. On the day of the beta's release, it temporarily replaced Fortnite as a most watched game on Twitch. Shortly after its beta, Fall Guys made another big move. It became a free PlayStation Plus game on the day of its release. Within a few weeks, it became the most downloaded PS Plus game of all time worldwide. The slapstick gaming phenomenon also got attention from the esports community. In a light-hearted tweet, esports organization Panda Global introduced the Full Pandas, the world's first competitive Fall Guys team. Warning: Major spoilers for The Last of Us Part 2. When The Last of Us Part 2 came out in June, some fans were shocked to find that they played the second half of the game as Abby, the killer of a beloved character. After playing as Ellie for the first half of the game, the player then switches to Abby. It seemed that Naughty Dog made this move to communicate the point that Abby had similar motivations for revenge as Ellie. But a vocal group of fans didn't approve of it. Some of them took their outrage so far that they harassed the game's staff to the point that Naughty Dog had to make a public statement about it. Abby's voice actress, Laura Bailey, received death threats from aggressive fans who blamed her for her character's actions. A fan-made Change.org petition to remake the game's plot received more than 50,000 signatures. Despite these fan reactions, The Last of Us Part 2 received plenty of critical acclaim. You can see a striking contrast between critic scores and user scores on the game's Metacritic page due to review bombing. Shouldn't they just tell the creators what song or what clip is being claimed. Despite the existence of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, or DMCA, many Twitch streamers got away with playing copyrighted music on their streams. After an influx of DMCA takedown requests in June, though, Twitch started automatically scanning and deleting clips with copyrighted music. This update had streamers scrambling to make their clips compliant to avoid consequences. When Twitch announced its action against DMCA violations, it also mentioned that it would try to ease streamers into its increased enforcement. It stated that it would use its Audible Magic technology, which it previously used to mute VODs with licensed music, to scan clips and delete any that had DMCA violations. To ease clip deletion for streamers with vast numbers of clips, it introduced a new video management system. Some streamers still faced harsh punishments despite Twitch's promises, however. They reported that they received copyright strikes on their content that put them at risk of being permanently banned from the platform. They've been trying to DMCA YouTube. They've been trying to DMCA Twitch. Or they're, try, they're, they're now jumping in and trying to get that, that Twitch money. In the months counting down to the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S's releases, Microsoft made a move that could dethrone Sony as a ruler of exclusives. On September 21st, Xbox announced that Microsoft had purchased ZeniMax Media, the parent company of Bethesda Softworks and Bethesda Game Studios. Bethesda creates and publishes famous video game franchises like Fallout, The Elder Scrolls series, Doom, Prey, and Dishonored. Microsoft's purchase had gamers wondering if these games would become exclusive to Xbox consoles. Would exclusivity for Bethesda games become Xbox's answer to Sony exclusives like The Last of Us series? Head of Xbox Phil Spencer confirmed to Bloomberg reporters that they'll honor the PlayStation 5 timed exclusivity for Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo. But gamers don't know if Bethesda titles will be Xbox exclusive moving forward. In July 2020, Phil Spencer stated that he preferred not to focus on exclusives because he thought it ran counter to the spirit of gaming. Gaming. However, it's unclear how many other execs will have a say in Xbox exclusivity and what their opinions on the topic might be. After Fall Guys took over the gaming world in August 2020, another game starring Colorful Beans joined the fray in September, Among Us. Unlike the previous month's newly released indie hit, Among Us was released two years before it became a popular multiplayer game, in August 2018. Among Us's player base grew exponentially in late August and early September. According to a Twitter thread by Among Us developers, the game first saw a popularity spike in its first six months when it became popular with Korean and Brazilian streamers. During that wave, player numbers maxed at about 1,900 per day. The August to September 2020 rise in users resulted in an average of over 100 million daily players. How did Among Us become such a hit in so little time? Wes Fenlon from PC Gamer credits Twitch streamers like Soda Poppin and XQC, who have millions of viewers. Due to their game's sudden popularity, developers in a sloth changed their plans to create an Among Us sequel. They decided to rework the original game with the features they wanted in the sequel so people could continue to enjoy playing it. 
After waiting for nearly three quarters of 2020 for next-gen console prices and release dates, video game fans got the news they wanted in September 2020. Microsoft announced on September 9th that the Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S will release on November 10th, 2020. They officially priced the Xbox Series X, a performance-focused model, at $499. Their previously unmentioned Xbox Series S will come without a disk drive and with lower resolutions for $299. One week later, during the September 16th PlayStation Showcase, Sony revealed the PlayStation 5's release date and price. Both models of the PlayStation 5 came out on November 12th, 2020, just two days after the Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S. The standard model that features a Blu-ray disk drive costs $499 and the digital edition without a disk drive costs $399. The Xbox Series X and Series S came out on November 10th, becoming the most successful launch in Xbox history. A day after release, head of Xbox Phil Spencer tweeted, In 24 hours, more new consoles sold in more countries than ever before. This move wasn't unexpected, considering that Microsoft also avoided releasing sales numbers for its previous console generation. Microsoft's release came with some controversy, such as reports of smoking Xboxes and scalpers causing an uproar by reselling the system right at launch. Videos showing smoke coming out of the Xbox Series X circulated around the internet, giving potential buyers pause. Paul Tassi from Forbes pointed out that these videos were likely fake because of the high chance that the smoke was actually from a vape pen. Microsoft later confirmed that these videos were faked. Unfortunately, the scalper issue was all too real. Xboxes quickly sold out, and overpriced scalped models soon popped up on reseller sites. Microsoft estimates that it can meet customer demand within a few months. On November 12th, the PlayStation 5 released with the promise of impressive technology such as the DualSense controller. Critics considered the controller's haptic feedback and the system's advanced UI some of its greatest advantages. While critics were impressed with the console, its difficulty to buy online and bricked models put a damper on the PS5's launch. Like the Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5 had problems with supply numbers and scalpers that made it hard to buy. Some people felt disappointed that influencers, YouTubers, and streamers got free consoles while consumers hardly got a chance to buy one. Some gamers who managed to get their hands on a PlayStation 5 faced major technical issues like non-functional models. Despite these setbacks, the initial numbers suggest that the PlayStation 5 won the great console race over the Xbox X and S. VG247 discovered through a Japanese Famitsu article that the PlayStation 5 had much higher launch sales than its Xbox counterpart. As of late 2020, Google search results indicate more interest in the PlayStation 5 than the Xbox Series X and S.